Hi guys, I'm Carl from Carl's Ceramics and welcome back to another Easter themed video. In today's video I will be showing you how to make an Easter bunny. I will first throw a body on the wheel and later on I will be hand building some ears and a little nose which will be attaching to the body. And on the end I will also be showing you how to decorate the Easter bunny with some inner glazes. I quite like how it came out so I hope you do too. And without any further ado let's head over to the wheel and get started. I take a piece of clay that is quite big because I will be throwing the body and the head in one piece as a close form and for closed forms you always need a bit more clay than you might expect at the beginning. I start with centering this by coning it up and pressing it down. You can repeat this multiple times until the clay is fully centered. Then I press the clay downwards and I start opening it up. I do this by pressing my middle finger into the middle of the clay and I support my right hand with my left hand. And with this piece which is a little bit different than most pieces I push all the way down to the bed. So I press my finger onto the plaster bed that I'm throwing on because I don't want this shape to have a bottom. Then I pull the clay sidewards and I just get rid of the full bottom by just pressing onto the bed. And then I start pulling up the walls. I do this by holding a sponge in my right hand and I press towards my left hand on the inside while making an upward movement. I repeat this multiple times so that the clay gets thinner and the walls get higher. And as you can see I start with making the clay in the shape of a cylinder. So I try to move my hands as straight as possible. And I also like to support my right hand with the thumb of my left hand. By doing this I can move both my hands at the same time. But when the cylinder becomes too high I unfortunately can't do this and just have to move my hands separate from each other. Then when I have the height that I want and the clay is as thin as I could get it, I get rid of some water and slip that's on the inside of the piece because I will now be closing it. And when it's closed you can't get rid of this water anymore. And if you leave this in the piece might crack so I would recommend to just get rid of it. Then I start defining the shape. I first make the neck of the Easter Bunny a little bit by pressing my fingers towards each other at this part and then I also press the top part inwards a little bit to slowly start closing it. When you close it the clay becomes thicker at the top so you might like to pull up the clay an extra time just like we did before. And just like that I slowly move my hands inwards and I start defining the shape more and more. So I make the neck and I also start closing the form at the top. I would recommend to first make the neck before fully closing it because when it's closed the air can get out and you can't really change the shape that much anymore. The shape doesn't have to be perfect yet at this point it's just important that you know what is going to be the head and what's going to be the bottom and we will change the shape later a bit. And then I close the shape at the top by pressing the clay towards the middle towards itself. If it's a little bit wobbly at the top this isn't a problem you can just push away a little bit of clay with your finger and smooth it out like that. And then I start defining the shape a little bit more. Since it's a closed shape it works a little bit different than a normal shape that you might be used to. So you might have to figure out how this works exactly. I can't really explain it but you just have to feel how it works. But by pressing on one side the other side might change because the air is in there. What I like to do is go over it with a wooden loamer to get a fluent shape. And in this case I made the neck a little bit different because the piece first had like shoulders or something. And I didn't really want that because it didn't look very cute. So I got rid of that by pressing on top of it with a wooden loamer. And then I take a wooden knife and cut away some excess clay at the bottom. And I also clean my bed with this. And then I go over the whole shape again with a wooden loamer so that I can take the bottom part into the shape. I saw that I had to cut away a little bit more clay at the bottom so I just did this with the wooden knife again. And then I went over the bottom with a sponge to smooth it out a little bit and I also went over the neck to smooth this out. And then I just went over the whole piece to get rid of any slip or water that was still on there. And then before letting the piece dry I make a little hole at the bottom by pressing my needle tool into it. This way the air has a way out and when the clay dries and shrinks it won't crack. And then I let it dry for a day so that it becomes leather hard. And I cut it off the bed. I had a little bit of excess clay at the bottom on the inside because it's quite difficult to press all of this away while throwing. So I like to just cut this off with a little knife. And then I take a wet sponge and I go over the rim on the inside and on the outside to just smooth it out and get rid of any sharp edges. And then I start working on the ears. I just take a bit of clay and I roll this in between my hands to already get closer to the shape of an ear. It was a bit too much clay so I pinched some clay off and then I rolled it in between my hands again. And as you can see I made one part of the clay a little bit sharper than the other one because this will be the top of the ear if that makes sense. Then I put it down on the table and I flattened it a little bit and I went over it with my fingers a few times to smooth it out. And as you can see it's quite thick because I like to cut it in half and then make it into two ears. I do this by just cutting it with a little knife. Cutting it in half is an easy way to get both of the ears in the exact same size and shape. So I would really recommend doing this instead of making two separate ears because otherwise it can be quite hard to get the right shape. And as you can see when I cut it, it wasn't really smooth so I just smoothed it out by going over it with my finger a few times. 
and I just pressed away all the lines that were on there. And I did the same with the other ear, but this ear became a bit thinner than the previous one, so I just took a little bit of clay and pressed this on top of it to make it a bit thicker. And then I also smoothed it out so that I had two ears that looked almost the same. And then I take this tool and I start defining the ears a little bit more by making the middle part a bit thinner. I do this by pressing clay inwards and by using this tool it's quite easy to do because then I can easily see what I'm doing and it's easy to put quite some pressure on it. If you don't have this tool you could also just do it with your fingers but with this tool it might work a little bit easier. And I do the same thing on both ears. I like to work on both ears at the same time instead of making one ear and then the next one because by doing the same things on both of the ears it's easy to keep them in the same shape and then I take them off the table if you want to prevent it from sticking you could also put a newspaper or a piece of fabric onto your table this will prevent it from sticking but if it just takes a little bit you can just still get it off and then I went over it with a sponge to smooth it out and get rid of any lines and I of course did this on both ears and then I cut away a little bit of excess clay at the bottom because this way it will fit onto the Easter buddy's body a bit better <laughs> And then I took them off the table again and the back was a little bit sticky and I had a little bit of texture. So I smoothed this out by going over it with my finger. And I also used a wet sponge at some parts that were a bit harder to smooth out. And just like that I went over it a few times and I did the same with the other ear. And then back to the body, I take the ear and I place this on top of it to see where I want to attach it. Then I mark the spot where I want to attach it and I took the ear away again. And then I scratched this with this scratching tool from Xeem Tools. I applied some vinegar with the brush which will help the clay to stick. And then I scratched it again with the same tool as before. And then I pressed the ear on top of the head. And I put some pressure on it. And then I used the same tool as before to smooth out the edges. And as you can see I just pressed the clay of the ear onto the head. And I also twist it a little bit because this helps to attach it. And I do this on all sides of the ear. And then I went over it with a sponge to just smooth out the edges a little bit. And to get rid of any lines. And then I started attaching the second ear, so I first held it at the place where I want to attach it. Then I marked the spot again with a little knife. You could also use your needle tool for this. And then I scratched this part again. I applied some vinegar and I scratched it again. And then I pressed the ear onto the head. And I again smoothed out the edges and pressed the clay onto the head by using this tool. I twist it a little bit and I do this all around the ear. And then I again went over it with a sponge to just smooth it out. And then what I like to do is bend one of the ears. This just has a cute look to it, in my opinion. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. And because the ear was a little bit dry, it cracked a little bit by bending it. So I got rid of the little cracks by going over it with a wedge sponge. And then I started working on the nose. For the nose, I just want to make a little triangle. So I just took a little bit of clay and I just pressed this in between my fingers into the shape of a triangle. Then I placed it on top of the head and by just pressing it on to see where I like it. And then you can still move it around. And then when I found the right spot, I marked this again, I scratched it again, and I again applied some vinegar and scratched it another time. And then I pressed the nose onto the head. And then I wanted to smooth it out, and I did this by going over the sides with the vinegar brush. Vinegar again helps to let it stick, but in this case it was also just easy to use the brush instead of a sponge. And then the piece is finished and ready to dry, I decided to glaze the rest of the face on by using underglazes. And then when it has been basically fired, I started glazing it. I wanted to make the ears and the nose pink and I didn't have a pink underglaze so I decided to mix some white underglaze with some red underglaze and I know that my red underglaze becomes quite dark after firing it so I decided to make the pink a little bit lighter than I actually wanted it to be in the hope that it would become a bit darker after firing it. So I just mixed this and then I started applying it onto the Easter Bunny with a small brush and I applied three coats. Three coats will make it one even color and you won't see any lines from the brush. Then I started to paint on some whiskers, I just took the smallest brush that I had and I used a black underglaze for this. And I also painted on the eyes with a small brush. I first made two dots but they were a little bit too small in my opinion so I went over it a second time. And then I saw that I wanted to make the whiskers in the middle a little bit longer so I went over these again. And then I decided to decorate the Easter Bunny on the bottom by painting on some flowers and some grass. So I took this thin brush with long hairs. This is a great brush to use for things like this because they hold a lot of clays and they're easy to make longer lines with. And just like that I painted these plants and in between I brushed some grass just to fill it up. And like that I went all around the piece. This was quite a lot of work but I think it was worth it in the end. And then I started adding flowers. I kept the flowers quite easy by just making some dots and some lines in different colors. So just like this I went all over it and I used small brushes 
And I also use underglaze from different brands, so it doesn't really matter which brand of underglaze you use here. And you can just use multiple at the same time. And I like to use different brushes to get different sizes of flowers here. So for some I use a bit of a thicker brush to get bigger dots. And for others I use a thinner brush to even make some lines, which I do really like. It's quite easy, but it has quite a nice effect in my opinion. And just like that I filled the whole piece up with flowers in different colors. And then when I was done with the flowers and done with the underglaze, I let it dry for a bit. And then I started applying clear glaze all over the piece. I applied two coats of clear glaze from Emico, And I of course let the glaze dry in between coats. Because I always get a little bit of glaze on the bottom and you don't want this because otherwise it will melt onto your kiln shelf. I twisted the piece on top of this wet piece of fabric to get rid of the glaze. And then it was ready to go into the kiln for a glaze fire. And here are some pictures of the final result. I really like how it turned out. That was it for this video, thank you very much for watching, I hope you liked and learned something new from it. If so, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have another chat. And if you're going to make this Easter Bunny yourself and you're going to post it on Instagram, please tag me at Scottish Ceramics because I would love to see it. I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!